Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train again here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a countdown timer in Microsoft Excel. You can see at the top here, I have today's date and today's time, and I also have my target date and my target time. That happens to be when the weekend starts. Now you can see in the main part of the screen here, I have the number of hours left. I also have the number of hours, minutes, and seconds left. Now I will show you how to create a formula which calculates the time between two dates or two times in hours or hours, minutes and seconds. But what I'm also going to show you is this functionality here at the top. You can see I have this start and stop button. And if I click the start button, you'll see what we get is a live countdown. You can see down here, the seconds are counting down. And of course, as the seconds count down, the minutes will, the hours will, and this red number of hours will also update. So this is a live countdown timer in Microsoft Excel. So let's get started. So let's begin by looking at the formula or formulas that we need in order to work out the difference between two dates and times in either hours, hours and minutes, or hours, minutes and seconds. First of all, I have today's date and the time right now here, and then I have the target date and my target time. Now the first thing we can do is actually connect or join these two separate pieces of data together. And that's fairly easy. We can simply do equals, and then I'll select my date, plus the time. And we're not actually doing addition here. If I press enter, you can see that we have joined or concatenated those two bits of information. And I'll simply replicate that formula down. So it's doing the same thing for our target date. So this is how to connect the two together. And we're going to do that in order to be able to calculate the difference accurately between this value and the target value. So I'm going to start by clicking in the cell for where we want the number of hours to be calculated between our start time and our target date or time. So to begin with, I'm going to use the equals text function. So equals text and open brackets, because we're going to be formatting this and formatting it as kind of text. And what we need to do now is basically what we did up here, and that is concatenate or join our dates with our times into a single bit of information. So we're going to start by doing the end date. So in brackets, I'm going to click on the end date or the target date plus and then click on my end time and then close brackets. So that's where we are uh, calculating the target date. And all we need to do is subtract that from our start date. So again, we open brackets, click on our start date, plus click on our start time, close brackets. Now we need to add a little bit of uh, formatting in here. And this is really where it's going to make the difference between whether you display it as hours, hours and minutes, or hours, minutes and seconds. So I'm going to put a comma in there. And then in speech marks to display it as hours, I'm simply going to put the letter H in square brackets like that, and then close speech marks and close the brackets for the text function. So that's the formula. If I press enter, you can see that the number of hours between my start date and time and my target date and time is 76. But let's now change that so that we've got the number of hours and the number of minutes. I'm going to cheat slightly to make this a bit quicker. And I'm simply going to copy the whole of the formula we've already written and click in this cell and paste that formula out because it is basically the same formula. However, Immediately after the H in square brackets, I'm going to write a colon, as we normally have a colon between hours and minutes, and then type MM. The reason I put two M's there is because if it was, say, three minutes past six, we wouldn't want it to be six colon three. We want it to be six colon zero three. So the minutes must always be displayed as two characters or two digits. That's why we put MM. And that's it. So I press enter now and you can see the number of hours and minutes between the start time and the end time is 76 hours and 45 minutes. 
and let's do the same for seconds. So I'm going to paste that formula in again. So we have our h in square brackets, colon, mm, and then for the seconds, it's simply another colon and ss. Again, we're putting two s's in there because the seconds should always be displayed as two characters, even if it's only three seconds past the minute. So with that, we press enter, and there we are. We've now got, at this point, 76 hours, 45 minutes, and zero seconds. Now, that's the formula for calculating the difference in hours and minutes between two dates. If that's all you need, you don't need to go any further in this, uh, in this tutorial if you don't want to. Um, if you feel you've got everything you need now, you're under no obligation to stay. However, if I've solved a problem that you had, if that's been helpful, would you just please do one quick favor and that's click the like button. It makes a huge difference to the channel, uh, especially smaller channels like this, uh, if you do click the like button. It helps get the video out to other people and spread the word about what we're doing here. So thank you very much indeed for that. Let's now uh, have a look at what I showed you earlier on, and that was the live timer. So at the top, you see here, I actually have uh, here an extra toolbar, uh, which has this start and stop button, which allows me to start and stop the live timer. Let's see how we do this. So to create our live timer, we do need to do a little bit of code. And to do the code, we need the developer tab at the top here. If you don't have the developer, uh, developer tab, then it's very easy to get. Simply go to any tab, bring up any ribbon at the top, find a blank area and right click on it, choose customize the ribbon. And on the right hand side here, you'll have a list of all of the tabs you could have. Uh, you'll see that I've got developer ticked. If you don't see developer tab, then yours won't be ticked. Simply put a tick in it. Uh, and then click OK, and you'll have this developer tab at the top. With that, there's lots of fun things we can do. And if you've never really explored this, then have a look for the videos on this channel, and I show you quite a few ways in which you can do some pretty cool stuff in Excel with the developer tab. For the moment, we're simply going to click on this button on the left-hand side that says Visual Basic. That brings up this window here, and what we're going to do now is right-click where it says at the top VBA project, right click on that, insert, and then choose module. That brings up what is effectively a text pad, if you like, a notepad, where we can write out the code that we need. Now we don't have to do a lot of code, just three very small blocks. So I'll show you exactly how to do that now. So before we begin, we need to have what we call a variable. A variable is basically a label which will store a particular piece of information. In this case, uh, we want to store the date uh, as next tick. So that's our variable at the top. We do that at the very top so it's available to all the parts of our code. Now the next bit we're going to do is to start our timer. So our timer is that little button that you see at the top, the start button, and then we have the stop button. Each of these buttons will have its own little block of code. So let's do the start timer. Um, each block of code um, with a list of instructions is called a subroutine. So to tell Excel we're starting to write a block of code, we write the word sub. And I'm going to name this block of code start timer and then press enter. You'll see it puts a couple of empty brackets afterwards and then puts an end sub to mark the end of our block of code. And in here we just want two, um, two lines of code. So the first one, this variable we have at the top, next tick, we're going to do something with that now. When we start the timer, next tick is going to equal now. In other words, the date and time right now, right this second. Um, plus, and this is going to be another variable elsewhere, uh, time value, and in brackets, speech marks, we're going to format this, colon, zero, zero, colon, zero, one, and close brackets. And the next one, next line of code is application, which is the Excel on time, which is a built-in function, uh, next tick, and then in speech marks, update date time. And that's it. That's all the code we need to start our timer. 
Uh, we then need to stop the timer at some point. So let's put a subroutine for stop timer. And in this, we need just to put in a little uh, routine that says if there's an area, if there's a problem, just go on to the next second, the next block of code. So we just put that in to be on the safe side. And then again, application, which is Excel, on time, a built-in function. Next tick, which is going to be a variable, comma, and then again, update, date, time. Uh, we don't need anything after that comma, so we, we'll put another comma and then false. I'm not really explaining how all this works because a lot of this is built-in stuff we don't really need to worry too much about. But basically, Excel has a built-in uh, function and understanding of dates and times um, and, and how to calculate those. So we're just basically telling it uh, that every time the date or time changes, uh, every one second of change at least, uh, then we need to update something on our spreadsheet. Um, right, one more little block of code that we need, and this is to actually update the time on our spreadsheet. So we have another subroutine, and this is going to be called update date time. And now we need to actually specify the cell in which we want the date to appear. So at the moment, I've got the date appearing in uh, C3. So this is the date now. So the target date is this one here. That Obviously, we're not going to change that. The code's not going to do anything at all about that. Um, our formulas will work for that. But we do need to make sure that now is programmatically, automatically updated by our code uh, so that it does know when now is. Otherwise, it can't work out the difference between the target date and now, because now is always changing. So the date goes in C3. Uh, so let's put in now here range, which is a way of accessing a particular cell or group of cells, in this case C3, which I put in speech marks, um, close brackets, and then the value of C3 is going to equal whatever the date is. And then we need to do the same thing, but this time for the time, and the time is being put in D3, so that's where the time now is going to appear. So in D3, the value is going to equal the time. And then what we need to do is just call the start timer routine here. So start timer like that. OK, so that's all the code we need. I'll pop the code in the description below this video. At least I intend to. If I forget, uh, please put a comment and I will add that to the uh, description. It has been known. Um, so there we are. That's now all the code that we need. So I can close the Visual Basic uh, window. And all we need to do now is work out how we can um, add these two buttons up here. How do we add our own buttons? Well, if you've already created uh, your macros, your, your subroutines, as we just have, you can add any of those to either your quick toolbar at the top here, or you can create your own toolbar in the ribbon. It's quite straightforward. Uh, let's right click anywhere here, customize the ribbon. And again, you'll see on the right hand side, we have these tabs. And you'll see here that I do have a tab called timer custom. And I can add a new tab. Let's click this button down here that says new tab. And we can click on this new tab now and we can rename it. Let me just call this demo for the moment. Click OK. Um, and so now if I click OK again, you'll see that I now have demo as a tab at the top here. No buttons on it for the moment. Um, let's right click again, customize the ribbon. You could in fact add any of the tools uh, and operations in Excel to that tab and create your own usable tab. However, we're going to add macros. So at the top, choose commands from, we're going to choose macros. And you'll see here we've got the three macros that we wrote earlier on. Start timer, stop timer, and update ting, uh, date time. I'm just going to create a quick group here underneath my uh, demo tab selected. Let's rename that group. And we'll just call this um, timer. And then we'll add the start timer to that group and the stop timer as well to that group. So you see I've got my demo toolbar my timer group and my start and stop buttons. Click OK. 
and you'll see we get these start timer and stop timer. Now, how did I color them? How did I make them look different? Well, again, if I go back into uh, this group here, I can click on start timer and I can click rename. Now, when I click rename, um, I can, if I want to either change the text here or in fact, completely remove it. And to start the timer, let's use the square this time so it looks different. So I'm clicking on an icon here. Um, there's a, a reasonable selection of, of basic icons there. I'll click the, re uh, the um, green square for start timer, click OK. And then stop timer, I'll click on rename. I'll remove the text. You don't have to remove the text, that's entirely up to you. Uh, and let's click the orange uh, square for stop timer, click OK. And click OK again. And you see now I have these start and stop buttons at the top here for my spreadsheet. So now if I click on the green button to start the timer, you will see straight away it updates the date in cell C3 and updates the time in cell D3. Uh, so C3 and D3 are the current date and time. And what it's doing is it's automatically updating and refreshing the spreadsheet or recalculating all the formulas on the spreadsheet uh, every single second. So that's that uh, code that we had earlier on, uh, which uh, had the zero, zero hours, zero, zero minutes, zero, one seconds. That's the interval that we're updating the time. So we've now got our uh, date and time here automatically updating every single second. Um, and down here, of course, we've got the minutes will be updating if we get there, but we can see at the bottom here, the 48 hours, 37 minutes and 47, 46, 45 seconds to go until the weekend. Uh, so that is how to do the timer. Now, on the example I showed you, of course, I made this timer much bigger. I uh, got rid of all this stuff here. So you can format all this as, as much as you like. We can actually get rid of the text by putting that as white. Um, let's get rid of that text as well. Uh, we can hide all this. Let's have no fill um, and text as well. Let's have white fill there and no borders. There we go. We'll have this one with a thick border and let's increase the font size dramatically. Let's change the width of that. Move it further up. So you can see here how you can obviously format this if you wanted to have a, a great big countdown timer uh, somewhere for exams or for your, your party or in this case the weekend, um, then you can format that uh, however you like, of course, uh, as long as you've got the formulas somewhere on your spreadsheet and the code uh, that I've shown you. So there we are. I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you did, again, do please give this video a thumbs up. It does make all the difference. And if you like this kind of content, then do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, requests, any issues or problems, uh, please do leave comments below the video. I do try and uh, read all comments and I reply to as many as I possibly can. And those I can't, I try to integrate into future videos. So there we are. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye for now.